You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Under the voice of You are exalted above the names. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and all those videos from 2020. They're all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Ageda, which is right on the screen. I will encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view those old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and while you're on my channel very important do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel like comment and share and the lord bless you as you do now pastor adebay led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and pastor gives you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so let's go straight into the daily devotional today is a very today is special day it's march 4th so we're marching forth into 2024. Praise God. Um, March 4th, Monday, Monday, March the 4th. And the title of today's daily devotional is Your Right Hand Man Part 3. Your Right Hand Man Part 3. Now, this is a three-day series and we should be ending today. So we started on Saturday. And I encourage you, you know, very important that you view the videos from the past two days. So you can have a holistic understanding of what the Spirit of God is teaching us amen your right hand man part three now the scriptural reading is taken from the book of second samuel chapter 23 verses 8 to 23 second samuel chapter 8 second samuel chapter 23 verses 8 to 23 and i'm going to be reading from the traditional king james version and just thus goes the reading of god's word and this be the names of the mighty men whom david had the Takno, Takmo knight that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino, the Ez, Ez knight. He lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David. When he defied the Philistines that were gathered together in battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave onto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people returned after him only to the spoil. And after him was Shama, Sham, Shama the son of Agi, the Hararites. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop when he was, when, where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines, but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. And the three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And these three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should drink, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things did these three men. And Abishai, the son of Joab, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among three. And he lifted up his spear against three hundred and slew them and had the name among the three. Was he not most honorable of the three? Therefore he was their captain. Howbeit he attained not to the first three. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzil, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab, and he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man, and the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and the 
and had a name among the three mighty men. He was more honorable than the thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Praise God. Amazing. There's nothing you, I mean, there's nothing you're looking for. If you're looking for an action, action, you know, like, I like, like action movies a lot. What's, we have the book of Judges and we have this valiant man. And you know, as I looked at this, you know, you see this, this one of these mighty men. So there were three mighty men that David had. And then he had some other groups of mighty men. And these were not ordinary people. These were men that had the spirit of might. They were gifted of God. You know, because the Bible says, told, told us about Samson, that when the spirit of the Lord came up, when the lion roared against him, then the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he took the lion and tore him like a man would tear a, a goat, you know. So, but look at Benaiah, he also confronted a lion. So that's not, that's not ordinary. That is the demonstration of the spirit of might, one of the seven spirits of God, non-negotiable. Men cannot be like this and it's ordinary. This is the spirit of might. Only God can give this kind of gift is a gift. Amen. It's an anointing. Praise the Lord. And these are, you know, um, David's mighty men. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit is so amazing. He's, he, he, the Holy Spirit has given us details of their names, who, where they were from, their father's names, and the exploits that they wrought in the name of the Lord. Praise God. And, you know, they, they did it by the power. The Bible says, and... And the Lord wrought a great victory by his hand. So it was God who was doing all these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, um, the memory verse is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And they were with him about 400 men. So these men went from being... The Bible says everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became captain over them and they were about 400. So it was out of these men who were discontented, that were in distress, that, um, you know, that, that were in debt, they just had some, some issues. You know, David became master over them and he raised them from being discontented, from being in debt, from being in distress and he made them into mighty men. You know, that is a leader. Praise God. Your right hand man. And and you know, um, um in first chronicles chapter twelve, verse one, they were called helpers of the war. Let me see, because as I read this, that scripture came to my heart. It says, uh, now this were they that came to David to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. They were helpers of the war. They helped him to fight the cause of God. Praise the Lord. They were helpers of the war. Hmm. The, your right hand man. So all these people were David's right hand men. You understand? Praise God. Now I wrote some scriptures down here that I would like to share with us. Praise the Lord. Let me just pull them up. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go straight into the daily devotional. Now, Daddy says that when David was in the cave of Adullam, he had some right-hand men that were called the mighty men of David. And in 2 Samuel 23, verse 16, they risked their lives to get him water. The, getting the water, he had a longing to drink. Though they were vagabonds when David met them, they became valiant men under him. And he gave them high ranks in his, in his army. Ahitophel was also David's right hand right hand man right hand man and psalm 41 verse 9 tells us that he sat at david's table when god gives you right hand men they must be honored and never looked down on joseph was pharaoh's right hand man and when joseph brought his people to egypt pharaoh gave them goshen the best part of the land to dwell in great men know that to be successful they must honor and take care of their right hand men so in the part one and part two, so here now, daddy is um, talking to the, the man who has right hand men, to the uh, leader, okay? Or well, in the first two parts, part one and two, daddy was referring to the person who was called. But here, daddy is giving instruction to the leader on how to deal with his right hand men. So david when this when these people this um you know when this discontented these men that were in debt they had issues when they came into david's life he turned them from 
low lives into mighty men. You know, so when they came to him at the cave of Adullam, they, they were called, they became the mighty men of David from, from he brought them, he, he raised them up by the power of God. You know, he was a good leader. And there was one time he said that, oh, you know, they were fighting against the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines were in Bethlehem. They had, you know, and there were many. They were always much more than the children of Israel. And David was like, oh, I just wish I could drink water from the well in Bethlehem. And these three men broke into the garrison. When you talk about a garrison, that's, it's like thousands and thousands of soldiers, you know. Um, he broke into the garrisons of the, the three of them. And they drew water from the well and brought it to David. That means they, they must have stood against 10,000 men, you know, a garrison, you know. And um, when they brought the water to David, David was like, I can't drink this water because it cost this men. This could have cost them their lives. So he poured it as a libation unto God. But this were, these were men, you know, men of God. And um, I remember when I was reading this, you know, um, in First Chronicles uh, 12, verse 18, they were his mighty men. You know, one of them, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of them. The Bible says in First Chronicles 12, 18, that then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains. And he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thy son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto thee, and peace be unto thine helpers, for thy God helped thee. Then David received them and made them captains of the band. So they were even men, they were filled with the Spirit, because this man spoke by the Spirit of God, he was one of the mighty men. So he didn't just make them mighty, you know, um, in their careers as soldiers, he also made them great men of the Spirit. Praise God. And you know, that uh, daddy, was, daddy was also saying here that Joseph was, Joseph on the other hand was Pharaoh's right hand man. Now, I was saying yesterday that, you know, daddy was teaching us that, um, a right hand man is as though you know like when you're in, you have a calling over your life maybe you're a pastor or a prophet god worries with at least one person who will be your right hand man to assist you you know but sometimes it may not just be in a, the spiritual realm you know as in in a spiritual calling you could be the right hand man to your managing director you could be the right hand man to your manager that you're always helping him, getting his stuff ready, you know, when he's in a meeting, you're there to assist him, you know, things like that, you know. So, and, and you know, Daddy was teaching us some things that we need to do as right-hand men, that, you know, a right-hand man always covers the weaknesses of his leader. Praise God. So, Daddy is saying that, but however, if you are the one who has a right-hand man, you must make sure that you treat the one that God has given to you as a right-hand man, treat them very, very well. They must, Daddy says, you, they must be honored and never looked down upon. You must not look at them like they don't have a choice. They have to serve me. I'm the one that carries the anointing. No. Daddy says they, may, they must be honored. And Joseph was Pharaoh's right-hand man. But when Joseph brought his family to Egypt, Pharaoh gave Joseph's family the best of the land in Goshen. So that is saying that great men know that to be successful, you, they must honor and take care of their right-hand men. Always take care of those who take care of you. Take care of them. Give them special attention. Okay? Don't look down on them like, you know, you, um, they, they, like you are almighty and they are gaining something from you. you no, know, we must, you know, must always take care of those who are helping us. Praise God. Amen. You must show your right hand men that you are just as committed to them as they are to you. Not long ago, Daddy then gives an example. He says, not long, long ago, a friend of mine called very late in the night and said, Daddy, I have a problem. He told me the problem and we ended the call. Soon after, I called my driver and we left the house. About an hour later, when I called him, he thought it was to tell him that I was still praying. But what he heard was, please tell them to let me in at the gate. He was surprised to see me. But I told him, what are friends for? Any time of the day that I needed him, he, he always ran to me. Now that he needed me, I also ran to him. Praise God. You know, don't think of yourself. The Bible says we should not think of ourselves more highly than we are. But we should think so badly as God has dealt unto us the measure of faith. You know, you need to watch those, um, the first two parts. You know, Daddy was saying that um, a, lead, a, a leader, a, a, a right-hand man always covers the weaknesses, you know, of his, of his leader. And, you know, that is showing us here how he had this friend who had a problem, you know. And um, when his friend called him in the evening, you know, 
they discussed about the problem and he dropped the phone and the next time he called his friend his friend thought that maybe he was coming to, giving giving him a feedback from the lord following intercession on his behalf but he was at his gates and he went to see his friend and his friend was like how what are you doing here i didn't expect you to take time out of your busy schedule to come and see me he said what are friends for because when he had a need even though he is in that high position as a general overseer he did not consider it robbery to come down and help someone who always helped him so that is saying that we should always take care of those great men that's the first paragraph great men know that to be successful they must honor and take care of their right hand men those who show you love always show they give them attention always help them always look out for them in a special way if you show commit if they show commit if people show commitment to you you must also show commitment to them that this is. Many people have lost their right hand men because they refuse to honor them. Whenever it is possible, I usually rearrange my schedule so that I can be at the birthday celebrations or some of the people God has placed as my right hand men. You may not know it, but that fellow who has been very committed to you might, might have been mocked at one time or the other because of it. They, there might have been times when you unknowingly did something that offended the fellow. And he or she endured it because of his, his or her commitment to helping you achieve your vision. In return, whenever you have the opportunity, you must always show commitment to your right-hand men. That will, go, that will really go a, a long way in encouraging them. Praise God. So if, for example, maybe you're a leader and somebody that you know God has raised this person to help you. This person is so close to you, is always assisting you, is always helping you to add the dots to the I's and help you to cross the T's, make sure that you have, um, uh, you know, they, sometimes they call them pastor's assistant, you know, just there to help you, doing their best that they can. Sometimes in the background, they are mocked. They are mocked. Or, you know, like when people are discussing, they will keep them out of the loop. You know, they, they, they suffer some kind of, um, you know, just some exclusion. You know, so maybe when you travel, buy that person a perfume, just anything to encourage them, to show them that you appreciate their commitment to you. Praise God. And the pastor says that would really go a long way to encouraging them. And in the first two videos, you know, daddy explained to us what we, what we must do as when we are the right hand man or woman of right hand man of somebody of high position, the kind of, um, position character that we must have praise the lord very important now the action point here is pick up your phone and call that fellow who has been a right hand man to you just to encourage him or her you can also present him or her with a gift of appreciation praise the lord that's very 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 that means that you acknowledge what they are doing for you you see it you may not have commended them openly but you are acknowledging what they have done for you that's a gift of appreciation and that's good that's good and honorable praise the lord so let us pray heavenly father in jesus name we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple the bible says that he that wants friends you must show yourself friendly father lord help us to always show ourselves friendly in the mighty name of jesus help us almighty god to be able to bless those who show us who are committed to us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us not to think of ourselves more highly than we are, but help us to think soberly as you have given unto us the measure of faith. The Bible says that he that had no wisdom, let him ask from God who gives liberally to all men. We thank you for those whom you have raised to help us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you um yes there was something i saw here praise god let me just quickly talk about that you see ahitophel that's in the first paragraph daddy says that ahitophel was also david's right hand man and psalm 41 verse 9 tells us that he sat at david's, ta david's table when god gives you right hand men they must be honored and never looked down on so we all know ahitophel and yesterday we were ta i was talking about gehazi who would, who was actually the right hand man of elisha but he lost his position because of greed you understand and that's exactly what happened to ahitophel ahitophel became um he, he became a bad person he was Bathsheba's grandfather you know and um, the bible says in psalm 41 41 verse 9 this was how he he treated david you know which we if you're a right hand man to somebody don't ever do that david said yeah my own familiar feminine whom i've trusted who did eat of my bread had lifted up his heel 
against me. So Ahitophel turned against David, just like Gehazi, you know, also, and Judas Iscariot, who was one of God's, just, he was one that was keeping the money for, um, the you know, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a thief. Gehazi and Ahitophel. In fact, Ahitophel joined, he became a rebel. He rebelled, rebelled, he, he, he rebelled against David and, and joined sides with Absalom, David's son, but who had become an enemy. You know, so these are bad examples of right-hand men that we must never copy. Praise God. Sorry, I just had to put that in. God bless you. And thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. Don't forget to subscribe while you're on my channel. And God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Temitayo. And God bless you.